and recording has started. All right, good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome today to today's workshop. Um, get your local business on Google search and maps. My name is Zell McGee. I am an accredited small business consultant here at the Small Business Development Center at Texas Tech University in Abilene. Uh, grow with Google helps people across the United States grow their skills, careers and businesses by offering free tools, training and events. We partner with them to provide these webinars to you to give you um, much needed information and using their products. In today's workshop, you'll learn how to set up, verify, and manage your business profile on Google. Um, verifying and managing your business profile helps local businesses be found on Google search and maps. For any nonprofits here today, this tool works the same for you. Organizations that see local customers or clients face-to-face -face, in store or by visiting a customer's location can benefit from having a business profile. Once you create and claim your business profile called verification, you can manage your information as it appears across Google search and maps. This helps potential customers find important information, including phone numbers, hours of operation, and driving directions. Another nice thing about Google My Business is they let you create a free website, which you can provide basic information to your customers and clients, which is very, very valuable if you don't have a website. So let's get started. If I can get my slides to go, sorry about that. Um, today, uh, workshop will be divided into five sections. We'll spend the first few minutes explaining a business profile on Google, what it is, what it includes, and where it appears. Next, we'll review the steps to creating and verifying your free business profile. Third, we'll discuss how to manage your business information. Then I'll go give you a tour of your business profile and show you how to make updates. Finally, I'll wrap up with a quick recap and some suggested resources to help you learn more. Let's take a look at this short video that introduces how to create and upload your business profile on Google. My name is Vince. This is my shop. I opened Village Tailor and Cleaners in 1977. I arrived in New York four years earlier from Italy. It was me, my brother, my mom, and my dad. My mother taught me how to sew. When I opened the shop, the first person I hired was my mother. This is Bruno, the store Moscow. My little advertisement. As a business owner, you're always thinking, how can you do better? I noticed that customers come in with the clothes in one hand and the phone on the other, always looking up information. So I said to myself, we have to put this store online. Google lets me decide how the shop shows up. I take photos, I can post special hours, anything. I made this website in 10 minutes using the website builder. And I'm not kidding. Now people walk in and I'm always asking, how did you find us? They used to say, I saw Bruno, so I came in. Now they say, Google. Believe it or not, we're up 30% this year. 
we're doing enough business, I have to hire more tailors and get some new machines. I've got three shops going. My son lives in Junior, he's running one of them. He's really popular in Australia. In an old fashioned profession, I work with my hands. I hadn't thought much about putting the business online. Now, I couldn't be happier. Village Taylor, 40 years and going strong. So what is a business profile on Google? A business profile is, a, is free and allows your business information to appear correctly on Google search and maps. A verified business profile allows you to update your address, phone number, website, open hours, plus answer reviews and more to help customers find and connect with your business. Business profiles can only be created for businesses that either have a physical location, customers can visit either, excuse me, business profiles, <laughs> Um, wow, I lost my spot. Business profiles can only be created for businesses that either have a physical location customers can visit or that travel to visit customers where they are. The general rule is that a business must make in-person contact with customers during its stated hours. This does not mean that if you have an online store, you cannot have a Google profile. It just means you have to travel to your customers during your hours at some point, And you have to identify that when you register for your site. Um, some examples of ineligible businesses include rental or for sale properties such as vacation homes, model homes, or vacant apartments. So if you have an Airbnb business, you cannot use um, Google My Business. There are other things that you can use that will work kind of the same way. Sales or leasing offices, however, are eligible for verification. Now, if your business hasn't opened yet, you can still create a business profile and let your community know that you'll be opening soon, which is very valuable. You can set your future opening date, engage with customers, and announce when and where you'll be open for business. To do this, when you create your business profile, be sure to choose the verify later option when you're prompted to verify. Then set your future opening date before you verify your business. That way, you'll prevent your business from falsely appearing on Google as open. Um, let's take a look at the anatomy of a business profile. The image on the screen shows the business profile of Village Tailor and Cleaners as it appears on a mobile device. It highlights various areas of the business profile, photos and videos, name, overview, reviews, quick links, and location. When a shopper discovers your business profile, they'll see information about your business like your address, phone number, contact info, hours of operation, and more, including photos and videos, which help customers get a look at your store and its products. So you wanna make sure and put very good quality photos on your profile. Um, customer reviews, which allow people to see what others say about your business. Quick links, which offer any access to messaging, your website, and more. It's important with your um, customer reviews that you respond to all of them the good ones or the bad ones. Don't um, get caught up trying to delete reviews because that will reflect very negatively on your business. Um, you, should, you should take the, the concerns of customers, clients that do not have a good experience with your business to find where the issue is um, existing so that you can correct it for the future. This slideshow shows an example of a business profile. It appears on the right side of the search results page when you use Google My Business uh, or you use Google. Creating a business profile allows you to edit the information Google displays. So your business details are up to date and consistent across search and maps. Another nice feature about Google My Business is that you can set your hours for holidays or times that your business will be closed and it will show up automatically. Creating a business profile won't guarantee that your business will appear in the search results, but it definitely can help. This image shows how the same business can also appear on Google Maps, pulling the information from the business profile. Appearing on Google Maps is important. People visit 1.5 billion destinations every month related to their Google searches. For those of you that have tried to find my office, you can attest to this because we are in a very strange location in Abilene. 
And people are searching locally. There are billions of local searches made monthly and more than 30% of all mobile searches are related to location. Businesses with storefronts open to customers and those that meet with customers in local service areas can appear on Google Maps. There are many signals Google uses to determine which results to show, including factors like relevancy, distance, and prominence. Relevancy is how well a business profile matches a search. If your business profile is detailed and up to date, Google is more, li more likely to show it for relevant searches. Distance is just like it sounds. How close is the business to the searcher or to the area specified? Prominence is gauged by how well known the business is based on information Google can find across the web. Business profiles work on all devices, so potential customers can find you no matter how they get online. The image here shows how a business profile appears on a mobile phone, laptop, and tablet. They all show a range of details to help searchers find the information they need about your business. This is particularly important because smartphones have become indispensable shopping tools, and many people rely on them to do research and make purchases. Here's how to get started if you haven't claimed your business profile yet. Click on the link labeled Own This Business. Claim it now. The image on this slide shows the business profile Village Tailor and Cleaners appearing on a mobile device with a call out pointing out Own This Business, Claim It Now. If you don't see this link, you can visit google.com slash business to get the process started. Let's talk about creating a business profile on Google. One of the ways to access your business profile on Google is by visiting google.com slash business. If you already have an account, you can click sign in. If you're new to creating or confirming your business profile, click manage now. The image on this side shows the sign in page with a manage now button. As I just mentioned, you can also access and edit your business profile by looking for it on Google search and maps and clicking the claim it now link. I highly recommend that if you have if you are going to create a Google My Business profile, you create a Google email address for your business. I would not use your personal address to tie it to your business. That's just a personal thing. Um, it's, it's a minor thing to do, but it's very useful for you in the future. To use any of the tools I'm going over today, you need to be signed into your Google account. This provides a single sign-in, username, and password and lets you access all the connected Google products. For example, if you sign into Gmail, which is automatically a Google account, you don't need to sign in again to access your calendar and docs. They're all connected. Again, I personally keep mine separate. I don't keep my business profile tied to my personal stuff because I don't want to get confused with my business email and my personal email. This GIF shows an animation of how to sign into your account. If you don't have a Google account, you can set one up for free. You can choose to get a new Gmail address, or you can use another email address you already have to register for a Google account by visiting accounts.google.com slash signup. So you don't really need to have a Google account. You can use your Hotmail account or something else, or even your own domain email account to create your Google account. If your business slash employer uses Google Workspace, you may have an email address that doesn't look like a Gmail address but it's still a Google account. If you aren't sure if your work email is a Google workspace or not, check with your team at work. The Google account you use should be one with an email address you check regularly. Google will communicate with you about your business profile through that email address. The email address used to verify the account is not visible to your customers. Um, they will be sending you a lot of email because you'll get um, analytics and other information about your um, Google My Business, which proves it, it's very valuable for you to use. Once you begin typing your business name, a drop down list may appear. If you see a list of businesses, scan the results for yours. Earlier, I told you about Village Tailor and Cleaners. As you saw in the video, the owner opened a second shop called Vince's Village Cobbler which is now being managed by his son, Vincent Jr. We're going to walk through the steps Vincent Jr. would take to set up the business profile. If your business name does appear, click on it. This skips you ahead one step. 
If that's the case, you won't enter business details. You'll immediately be asked to confirm your business. Don't worry if you wanna make changes to your information. I'll show you how to do that in a few slides after you've verified your business profile. If you type in your business name and it doesn't appear in the list, or you don't see any options listed, just click next. This image shows a search bar allowing you to enter your business name when creating a business profile. Next, you're gonna confirm your business name is spelled correctly. This screenshot shows where you'd be prom prompted to enter the name of your business. Click next to proceed to the next step. Next, you'll need to select a category for your business. Start by thinking of a category you'd like to use, then type in a few letters to see what options appear below. You must choose an existing category. You cannot edit or create them. It's okay if you can't find the perfect category, just choose something close. You can get more specific when you fill out your business details later. If your business fits in multiple categories, start with the main category. After your business profile is updated, you can add additional categories. When you're done, click Next to go to the next step. This screenshot shows how to select the business category from a drop-down menu when creating a business profile. You'll be asked to choose whether or not your business has a physical location that customers can visit. Many local service area businesses operate out of private homes. If you have a service area of business and see your customers face to face, but at the customer's location or a common area such as a coffee shop, you can hide your address. These businesses can still appear on Google Maps without displaying the address for driving directions. The areas that you service will be highlighted on the map. This screenshot shows the service area setup step. It asks, do you want to add a location customers can visit? like a store or office, with this option to choose yes or no. If you checked yes, you'll be asked to enter the complete official street address for your business. Please don't include extra details like cross streets or nearby landmarks. You can add suite or office numbers on the separate address line, click add line. PO boxes are not considered accurate physical locations and are not allowed. This includes mailboxes at locations other than your business address, such as shipping stores. If you check no, you'll be asked to enter the areas you serve. This can be done by entering cities, postal codes, or other areas like neighborhoods and districts. This image shows how to enter your business address when creating a business profile. For those of you who already have a business profile and selected a service radius around your business, this process has changed. You can no longer set your service area as a distance around your business. Instead, you'll need to specify your service area by city, postal code, or other areas. Also, if your business has a physical address but also delivers goods and services to customers, after entering the business address, you'll have the option to add additional service areas. These screenshots show how a business creates a service area by checking yes, I also serve them outside my location, then adding a service area. When you're done, click next to go to the next step. Next, you'll be prompted to enter your phone number or website URL. Providing current info will help customers get in touch and learn more about your business. When you're done, click next to go to the next step. This screenshot shows how to add business contact info, including a phone number and website URL. This screenshot shows the final screen before verification. It confirms the details you provided. Click finish to move ahead at, to the verification step. You wanna make sure that your information is accurate and you have no typos or other things um, wrong with your addition in there. Although you can go back and correct them later. Sometimes we just overlook things and we just wanna make sure we have accurate information out there. Now we start the verification process to confirm the business location and your authorization to manage the business profile. This slide shows the verification options. Everyone has the option to verify by mail. You may also have the option to verify via text or the Google search console. If you're ready to start the verif verification process, 
click mail. If your business isn't yet open or you want to wait to start the process, click later. When you click mail, a postcard is sent your way. It should arrive within five days, but could take as long as 14 days. If anyone else at your location checks the mail, such as a family member or a receptionist, be sure they know to, they know to be on the lookout for the postcard for you because you do need to respond to it. It's gonna have a code on it. This screenshot shows the verification confirmation page indicating that a postcard will be sent to your business address. You may be prompted to add some additional information that can help your business profile stand out on Google. Depending on the business category you selected, you may now be offered service options. This screenshot shows how a shoe repair shop has the option to add services such as adhesive repair, buckle and hardware replacement, color matching dyes, conditioning, heel repair, and mold and mildew removal. Select the options that are relevant to your business. If you have unique services that aren't offered to you here, you can create your own. This is very valuable to um, differentiate your business from others. So if there's something specifically unique that you do, you can put it on your Google profile and help people find your store and possibly generate more leads for you in that fashion. You may see this prompt to add a business description. Describe your business what you offer, what sets you apart, your history, or anything else that's helpful to, for your customers to know. Focus primarily on details about your business instead of details about your promotions, prices, or sales. You only have 750 characters to use in this box. Do not include URLs or HTML code. This screenshot shows a sample business description in a field with a character count. You can add photos of the storefront, products, and services to provide more information about your business. You can also add videos of up to 30 seconds. This image shows the Add Photos page. This is basically free advertising for you. Um, so this is very beneficial. I, every time somebody searches for your business category, you can have a free ad that pops up inside your search engine all the time. That's great. I like free. You can continue making updates, edits to your business profile at any time. Your edits will only be visible to customers on Google after you've been verified. This image shows the almost ready page that confirms the postcard is sent. It directs you in the business profile so you can make updates in advance. This screenshot shows the dashboard. In this example, the business profile for Vince's Village Cobbler has been verified. If yours hasn't been verified yet, you'll see a pending verification message. This dashboard is where you'll go to make changes, create posts, and photos and more. Those options are in the menu on the left of the screen. Sometimes newer special features will appear in the center of the dashboard. Now let's take a look at your business profile and see what you can do. This screenshot shows the home, home tab in the business profile dashboard. You can start, start at the dashboard to access the features I'm about to introduce. Incidentally, you also have the ability to make edits and updates to your business profile by doing a Google search. You must be signed into the Google account that manages your business profile. Then do a Google search for your business name. You should be able to manage your info directly from the search results page. This image shows you how to edit your business profile as it appears on the search results page with the business profile appearing on the right side of the screen. There is an option on the search results page that allows the business to edit their business profile. Now let's take a look at what you can do with your business profile. We'll start with a quick video, an example of a small business located in New York and how they use their business profile during COVID-19 COVID to share how their business changed during these challenging times. The oh, open Celsius with the idea to create a laundromat that people actually wanted to hang out in. When New York issued its stay-at-home order, we quickly shifted to drop-offs only. 
we switched to online booking through our Google profile, setting aside priority times for essential workers. We love our community and just wanted to help in any way we could. On this slide, the info tab is highlighted in blue. That's the area where you'll update most of your public facing business information. Let's start with your business name and category. If you've already created and verified your business, you'll have added your business name and category when creating your business profile. This is where you can confirm it is as it should appear. Make sure the name of your business profile matches with, with your storefront, website, stationery, and other branding. It should be the way your customers know you. If you want to update your category or add additional categories, this is where you would do it. You can add up to 10, 10 categories with the first category being your primary category. Somebody's mic is here. Mute, please. It's okay if you can't find the perfect category, just choose something close. You can get more specific when you fill out your business details. She wouldn't have the password anywhere because I'm pretty sure her mind is pretty much gone. Or she might, but she's so stupid. Her um, name's can I on there, but she Please, Jonathan. Thank you. The next section within the info tab is your address and or service area the geographic range where you'll visit or deliver to customers. The image on this slide shows an example of the business location section where you can update your address and add a service area. Let customers see your business location on Google by adding a street address. You do have the option to leave the address section blank if you don't have a public storefront or office. You'll also be able to set your service area in this section. This feature is designed for businesses who visit or deliver to local customers. If your business serves customers within a specific service area, you can list that service area on your business profile. Listing your service area tells customers where you'll go to visit or deliver to them. You can add up to 20 service areas and you can specify them by city, postal code, or other area. Keep in mind the following. If you don't serve customers at your business address, your office is in your home and or you want to hide your address, leave the address field blank and only enter your service area. This will remove the pin from the map section and create a, a shading on the areas that you serve. If you do serve customers at your business address, but also have a service area, for example, if you're a retailer who sells to customers in store and also delivers to their homes, enter both your address and service area. The next section under the info tab is for your hours of operation. This slide shows you how to update your hours by typing them in and clicking apply. It is important to make sure you keep your hours up to date because 40% of people searching for local businesses are looking for their hours of operation. And if your business has special hours throughout the year, like extended hours for holidays or closure, you can specify particular dates in advance. You can also specify hours of operation for services like delivery, takeout, drive-through, and senior hours under more hours. This slide shows the more hours field. Click on the pencil to edit this section. Once you pick a service, you'll choose the day of the week you want to change, check the box, and enter your hours. After you've entered all hours, click apply. More hours will then display for those selected days of the week. Note that more hours doesn't display until you first set regular hours. After you update your more hours, customers who visit your business profile will find a message that confirms your recent update. When you update more hours, it will also create a post, which we'll go over in a few slides, that confirms you made an hours change. This post shows up on the updates tab of your business profile on mobile devices. In the info tab, as shown on this slide, you have the option to add up to three business phone numbers as well as your website URL. Your phone number must be either a mobile number or a landline, not a fax number. 
If a shopper finds your business profile on Google from mobile device, they can click to call you directly from the, from the um, post on the display that they're looking at. Another way to help your business profile stand out is by adding attributes. Attributes are optional details about your business that you can choose to highlight within your business profile. As shown on this slide, to add attributes, click on the info tab, scroll down in the section and click on highlights. From there, you can select the attributes that best match your business. Some attributes are only available to certain business categories. Some examples of new attributes are identifies as veteran led or women led, black owned, what payment types are accepted, whether gift wrapping is available, if the location is wheelchair accessible and much more. You will also notice a section called health and safety. Examples include mask required, temperature checked, appointment required, and safety dividers at checkout. The attributes you select may be visually highlighted in search results, helping your business stand out even more. Check back regularly to see if additional attributes are available for your business profile. Next, you'll write a brief description of your business, up to 750 characters. This slide shows the box that allows you to do so. This should be an introduction to your business that tells the customer what they most need to know about you. Review this section periodically and make sure you update it with any major changes in your business. Once you're done editing, editing, click apply to save your changes. In most cases, only the first sentence or two will display in the search results. A searcher can click to read the full description. So put the most important information first. If your business hasn't opened yet, you can add a future open date up to a year in the future. Just choose the verify later option when you're prompted to verify your business. Then set your future opening date before you officially verify your business. That way you'll be present, you'll prevent your business from falsely appearing on Google as open. You only need to set the year and month of opening, not the specific day. Once you've entered the date and verified your business, your business profile will appear on Google 90 days prior to opening. This slide shows the window that prompts you to enter an opening date by selecting a year, month, and optional date. If your business hasn't opened yet, you can still create a business profile and let your community know that you'll be opening soon. This is a valuable marketing tool for you. Um, that way people, when they're searching for certain things, they'll be able to see if your business is going to be opening soon, which is, which is huge. If your business offers in-home educational or professional services, you have an option to allow customers to make appointments through Google by adding appointment links. links. Now, this is, huge for you again because you can schedule appointments and not spend any money to do so. That is very valuable. This slide shows the appointment link option under the info tab. This image shows the box that allows you to add an appointment link. If you already have a booking system set up on your website or through a third party platform like MindBody or Appointee, it is simple as adding the URL here. Once published, customers can see the link directly on your business profile. You can choose preferred link to display at the top by clicking the star next to the appointment field. This option is only available for action oriented links like an appointment order or appointment order or reservation, excuse me. Um, not informational links like a menu COVID-19 update or a service link. Note that businesses still need to have a physical operating presence Online only businesses are not eligible to verify their business profiles. These attributes are to assist physical businesses that now offer online services. Um, again, if you're prov providing service uh, within an area, you can kind of get around this requirement and still create a profile. So it's, it's not all bad news for strictly online business people. Let's move on from the info tab to some of the other available tabs. You may see the, see the bookings tab in the left navigation. If your business is in an eligible category such as health, beauty, and professional services. With this option, you can connect a third party online booking provider with your business profile as part of a service called Reserve with Google. 
You can learn more about it and participating providers by clicking the bookings tab or visiting google.com slash maps slash reserve. The slide shows the bookings tab. Businesses now have an option to enable an attribute that helps potential customers see that they offer online services. This attribute works in conjunction with bookings. When you indicate that online services are provided, your business profile will prominently show online classes, appointments, or estimates. Remember that your business still needs to have a physical operating presence. Online only businesses are not eligible again, you know, once again to, to apply for this, okay? Um, services that involve contactless de delivery or require you to visit a client's location do not qualify, even if the service is booked online. So that's kind of one of the um, small caveats that they put in here, but you can still, I think you still can get your business set up with this. The post tab highlighted on this slide is a feature you can use to provide live updates directly to your business profile. Posts allow you to communicate business updates, highlight an offer, promote an event, and more. Posts appear within the body of your business profile on search and maps, not in the organic center well section of a search page. A post includes text up to 1500 characters, one or more images up to 10, or video 30 seconds or less, and a link to where you want to drive traffic. There are a variety of different types of posts available depending on your business category. This slide shows the post tab and an example post mid creation. This could be very valuable if you wanna have an instantaneous promotion and just push them out there periodically which may drive sales for you. As I mentioned, the type of post available to you depend on your business category. This slide shows some of the types of posts available as displayed on a mobile device, including business updates, featured products, special offers, and events. Here are a few ways to use posts. What's new post announcements provide general information about your business, such as new menu item. You can include a photo video, 30 seconds or less, a link, a call to action button, and other information. Product posts emphasize a specific product you want to sell. They require a title and a photo or video. You can also include a call to action button and other details. This post, post type is available only to businesses with categories that offer products. Offer posts advertise promotional sales or offers from your business. They require a title and a start and end date and times. A view offer call to action button is automatically added to these posts. You can also include a photo video coupon code link and terms and conditions with the post. This is a great option for a seasonal offer. It's also free. Event posts mention upcoming events, celebrations, fundraisers, etc. Posts appear within the body of your business profile on search and maps. You can also see how posts are influencing potential customers by reviewing their activity from the dashboard. Next, we have the photos tab. Adding photos can help your business profile stand out on Google. This screenshot shows the photo tab with a variety of photos. You can also add videos up to 30 seconds in length. Photos can tell customers more about your business. Use photos to show how a product is made, packaged, and or shipped. Give a tour of your space, highlight an employee, show an unboxing of a new product or merchandise. This slide shows photos from Vince's Village Cobbler as displayed in the Google Maps and search results. Again, free advertising. Next up is the products tab where you can showcase your products. Customers will see a more curated showcase of the store's products on the business profile products tab on mobile or the product overview module on the computer. The products tab is only available to businesses in categories that typically offer products. This slide shows an example of how you add products using the dashboard by adding the product name, category, description, price, and photo. If your business is in a service-oriented service category, you'll have the option of adding them to your business profile. Look for the services tab in your dashboard. 
This slide shows the services tab and how to update service details. Your business profile is where your Google reviews can be found. When a customer writes a review of your business on Google, you'll be notified via email and or the app. This slide shows an example of customer reviews for your business as they appear on your dashboard. Once your business profile is verified, you have the option to read and respond to reviews about your business published on Google. Here are a few tips. Keep your responses short, sweet, polite, and professional. Don't use responses as advertisements. Try to respond to reviews, good and bad, as quickly as possible. When you get a positive review, thank the happy customer. If someone leaves a negative review, try to address it constructively. Business owners often ask for advice about negative reviews. Usually, how can I remove them? Google won't remove a review unless it violates a content policy. Instead, Google encourages business owners to respond. Responses might explain a company policy or encourage the customer to contact you privately to resolve the issue. If the customer does not contact you and the issue is resolved, consider asking them to modify or remove the negative review. This screenshot shows how customer reviews appear when signed into the app. The image on the left shows where reviews are located. The image on the right shows a business, a business owner's response to a review, which says, thanks for the review, Brian. We really appreciate it. Hope to see you in the store soon. Um, as a side note, uh, if a business owner uh, feels a review from a review violates Google's guidelines, you can go to your dashboard, find a review, click the three dots next to it and flag it as inappropriate. Um, at that time, Google will then make the final determination. If it violates uh, Google's guidelines, they'll take action against it. This slide shows the messages tab, which allows you to chat directly with customers. This feature allows customers to connect with you directly from Google search and maps. To turn on messaging, sign in and click the messages tab. From here, click the link labeled turn on messaging. When a customer sends a message, it will appear in this tab. In the past, you needed to provide a phone number to use this feature, but that's no longer the case. Respond to messages to answer customers' questions, tell your business story, and attract more people to your location. Your typical response time will appear on your business profile too. If you don't respond to messages within 24 hours, Google may de deactivate the messaging feature for the business profile. So be sure if you turn this on that you respond to messages and, and really allocate your time. Um, I would recommend that if you're gonna turn on the messages, you kind of do it for a certain period of the day rather than during your whole hours. That way you can dedicate your time period for that. <clears throat> One of the last tabs we'll review today is the Users tab. This slide shows how to add users on a desktop or laptop computer. The Users tab allows the business profile owner to invite others to help manage it. Incidentally, inviting another person only gives them access to the business profile, but not to any other Google products that you might use, like Gmail. In other words, they can't read your email. To add a manager, click Users from the left side navigation. Then click the button labeled Add Users in the top right corner. Now, add the email address of the managers you'd like to invite. There are four access levels available. Primary owner, that will be you, unless you transfer your ownership. Co-owners, managers, um, they can do almost everything owners can do except delete the business profile or transfer ownership. And site managers, they have more limited access to the business profile overall. When you're done, click invite to send an email to the new page managers. Once they open the email and accept the invitation, you'll see them listed as authorized managers. As the owner, you can revoke access to the business profile or transfer ownership. The last tab I want to show you is the insights tab. This feature is available for verified business profiles. Insights will show you how people found your business profile. All the reports available can be broken down by week, month, or quarter. The reports focus on how customers use search and maps to find your business profile and what they did once they found it. There are many different insights available within this tab. 
These insights provide you different ways to understand how customers interact with your business profile, including how customers find your business profile. It shows how many customers found you in a direct search. In other words, they search for your business name or address versus a discovery search. They search for a category, product, or service, and your business profile appeared. Or a branded search, customers who find your business profile searching for a brand related to your business. This screenshot shows insights tab, including how customers search for your business. You can review your insights either by week, month, or quarter. Um, and this is valuable for doing market research so you understand how people interact with your business. There are more reports available in the highlights in the insights tab, including search queries available on web, not app. Search queries focus on the terms that your customers use to find your business on local search and maps. This does not mean they clicked on your business profile, but that it appeared for that search term. Where customers view your business on Google, if they found your business profile on Google search or Google maps. Let me back up to the search queries real quick. Understanding you know, what people are searching for will help you to clarify your search engine optimization, which will make you appear more often in organic searches. So you might wanna check this when you first start to understand what people are searching for and use it to optimize your search engine optimization, your SEO. It's a great tool. Um, customer actions, what searches did once they found your business profile on Google? These actions include visiting your website, requesting directions, calling you or messaging you. Direction requests, you'll see your location pinned on the map and a heat map that shows the most popular places from which people ask Google Maps for driving directions to your address. The total number of requests broken down by zip code or city are displayed as well. It'll also list um, phone calls, when and how often searchers uh, called your business via your business profile. You can view trends by day, week, or time of day. Um, and also photos, the number of photos associated with your business profile and how often they're viewed compared to photos of businesses similar to yours. Okay, let's start to wrap this up. Um, I hope you're excited about all the things you can do with your business profile. Um, your next step is to create and verify a business profile for your business. Follow the steps outlined here, the first part of today's presentation. Um, I'll also be sending you a handout that will, be, will help you to get your business online with Google if you haven't done so already. Once you've created your business profile, make sure you keep it up to date. Schedule, schedule a time and date to update your business profile on a regular basis. Make it a habit and update the information every time you make changes to your business or have somebody that you hire that's going to do that. Add photos, videos, and post as often as you can. Be consistent. Learn how customers engage on search and maps with insights reports. This will prove very valuable in your marketing and help drive traffic to your business. I'd like to introduce some additional resources to help you get more from your business profile. Once you create and, and verify your business profile, check out market, our, uh, the marketing kit that is offered on the Google site. Um, this free resource allows you to create custom posters, social posts, and more from reviews and updates on your business profile on Google. It is very valuable and very useful, and it's free. See, I said that again, I like free, free is good. Um, visit g.co slash marketing kit and enter your verified business profile name to get started. In addition, there is a special marketing kit that celebrates businesses that identify as black owned. Um, so you can access it by visiting g.co marketing kit dash black owned. Um, this image shows an example of the free assets you can create with marketing kit. So again, free, man, it's free is good. If you wanna sharpen your business and marketing skills, check out the Primer app. Um, those of you that may be my clients will know that I've sent this information out to you um, previously. This app is very, very good to help you learn um, different things about business. It, it's very short in the presentations that they give um, and it's very useful and it's free. See, it's free. Uh, it has a series of short fun lessons that are all less than five minutes each. Um, and this image shows the primer, what, how primer looks on a mobile app with the home screen for the tips for building a su successful website course. 
Another great resource is the Google Quick Help videos. Get answers and learn how to make the most of Google's tools in just a few minutes. You'll learn things like how to get your business listed on Google Search and Maps, which is what we're doing today. Um, how to create your YouTube channel for your business, which will prove very useful for your business. And how to start a Google Meet conference. Might be useful for some of you, might not be useful for all. Um, check out the playlist on g.co slash grow slash quick help. You can also continue your education with Grow with Google on air. This free resource can help you grow your digital skills, no matter where you're located. Through online workshops, you can learn skills that can help you stay connected and, produ and productive while working or managing a business remotely. Visit g.co slash grow on air to learn more. This screenshot shows an upcoming and on-demand workshop available on the Grow with Google on air website. Grow with Google is an initiative to help people prepare for work, find jobs, and grow their businesses. Job seekers can grow their skills in order to find new jobs and advance their careers. Teachers can learn how to put latest technology to work inside and outside of the classroom. Small business owners can build their online presence and find new customers. Startups can learn how to get their class, their ideas, the exposure they need to succeed. Developers can sharpen their current skills and master new ones. To learn more, visit google.com slash grow. This slide shows some of the online training and tools available at google.com slash grow. And that concludes our presentation. And at this time, if anybody has any questions, I would be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, if not, I can always follow up and send you an email. I have here, what do you suggest when hours are by appointment only? Um, when you create your business profile, there's gonna be a, a section in there and you're gonna be able to say by appointment only. And you can actually, whatever time of day you take your hours by appointment. So like if you're only gonna see people between eight and five, or if you're gonna see people in the evening between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., um, that's what you would put in there but they can request an appointment at any time. They're only gonna be able to get that time slot though, when you're gonna be at work, if that answers your question. Hi Zell, this is Lura. That was my question. Um, what I'm thinking is, I don't want people to think they can just drop by and find me. So is there a way on the hours where it alerts them that appointments are only set or office hours are only set for appointments during that time frame? When you create your when you create your profile, you're going to I see have the two business. profiles created. OK, you just want to go in and modify it to say um, business is open by appointment only. There are okay. there are no walk ins. OK, I, I have that in the in the profile. So I have one other question. Yes, ma'am. Um, which I was hoping you would touch on today, but we didn't have the time. And that is setting up the um, free website that comes with the profile. How can I find some good information on getting that done? Even though I own my own business website, I'd like to have a landing page that's specific to the office. When you, when you create your Google, uh, my business profile, like if you go into your profile right now, there is going uh -huh. to be a thing, I, I believe it's called um, Google Sites. Google Sites. Okay. Um, and you're just going to go there and it will it will walk you through the steps right there. Thank you. It, it's it's kind of like when you first get on Wix, it says, okay, you know, let's create your website. That's basically what it's going to be. And it's not a real robust website, but it's good enough so that you can put who you are, what your hours of operation are, and maybe some pricing or some products. Yeah, I wanted some um, Calendly links for the different services I offer. Yeah. And, and the reason why it's really good is because when, when people search for your business industry or your business itself, this will pop up automatically. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was a great question. 
Well, if nobody has any other questions, um, I will be closing out this webinar. Um, I will be sending an email with some handouts uh, to help you get started with Google My Business or to give you information if you already have a Google profile on Google My Business. And um, this video of this presentation should be posted to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel sometime either today or tomorrow. I would like to thank all of you for attending and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.